my main focus at the moment is pods and seeds. Um, this one, the Noosa National Park walk, um, is one that I've walked many times before. Um, before I was even born, my family would holiday every year in Noosa. We'd come up for um, a month every Christmas. Um, and I remember doing that walk with my family. Um, how it has changed over the years is quite dramatic. I remember when we were young, you would, um, when you were early enough to see, you know, huge lizards that be sort of odd koala. Um, and walking that now after um, spending so much time away, it's incredible how different it is. Um, walking it um, is interesting because I've got mixed memories. So I've got memories um, from work walking with my family, so my father's no longer um, with us. Um, so it's sort of those, I have those mixed emotions as I'm walking along um, the track and of how it used to be, how it is now, um, and taking me all of those small, fine details. It's amazing how many people pass by and don't really look at what's around them. They don't really look up or look down, they're just focused on power walking or running or, you know, the surf or, um, and I think that's a real shame that people don't know, it's just the really small details and take the time. Um, this actually came about, um, I call myself a re-emerging artist and even saying artist, I feel like that's, I don't feel like I am an artist. <laughs> um, in Tasmania where I did my studies, um, I had, after uni, I had a couple of solo exhibitions and had some pieces in, many pieces in sort of group exhibitions, but I always felt as if I was not really an artist, I felt as if, you know, I was sort of um, a bit of a, uh, what do you call it, interloper. <laughs> um, and when I had my son, um, I had um, a couple of years off work and um, I ended up sewing a lot, um, but then I had a big break from art. And I found, I got to the point where um, I couldn't art if I, I tried, I kept putting up these boundaries. Um, it's sort of like, oh, when I've got time, I'll make art. But of course you never have time, because the list, when I've done X, Y, Z, then I'll make some art, but that never happens. And then I'd say, I don't have a space. So I set up a studio in the house. Uh, it was a very nice studio. And I didn't do anything. So I'd go in there and I'd be like, right, I'm going to make an artwork. Um, but I didn't know what to do. Um, I think I was thinking too much of the big picture rather than just sort of um, getting into it. Um, and that sort of self-doubt ended up sort of crippling me for about eight years or so. Um, until we moved here and it got to the point where I'm just, I'm just going to start. I'm just going to play around. I'm just going to, you know, do really, really small things and I'm just going to experiment with mediums and patterns and shapes and I'm just going to do something. Um, so being an early riser, I would sort of get up every morning and go into my studio and just spend a little bit of time just playing around. So I'm not making art, <laughs> I'm just, you know, experimenting. Um, so that's sort of how I got back into it. Um, I entered the Design Canberra Journal Challenge in 2022 where they would send you a word every morning and you would have to respond to it. Um, that was fantastic for me, especially conceptually. Um, I've always really struggled with the conceptual um, you know, idea of art and I think this is a hangover from uni. It's like, what are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I really struggled with that at uni, um, you know, so for me conceptually though, responding to these words every morning, I was really surprised myself at the responses that I came up with. At about day 12, because there were 17 words, about day 12 I was like, why am I doing this? And I got so heavily involved in it, um, but it was great at giving me the confidence um, in my own artwork, and then when I was shortlisted, that was a nice little sort of, oh, you know, I can do this. <laughs> um, so on from there, I just started focusing on pods and seeds. So I had a lotus pod sort of obsession, and it was just sort of how many ways can I drop them into a lotus pod? Um, what if I make it bigger? What if I make it smaller? What happens if I put the lines here or there or overlap them? Um, then I got into banks in this, um, and so 
from there I've gone on to other native um, sort of um, flora. Um, so I'll collect seeds as I'm going around and for me this is just very much about how many different ways can I document this object. Um, I do a lot of fine lines because I like to draw people in, um, you know, to really see, you know, step up close to the work. Um, it does affect my eyes. <laughs> um, so this is using um, watercolour, ink and fine liner. Um, I've actually got some of my journals here that you can have a bit of a look at. Um, so you can see um, the processes since I go. I have many experiments because I don't call them artworks. Um, at last year's news Open Studios I actually had somebody who didn't want to buy one of my artworks because it wasn't signed. And she said, I'm not going to buy it, unless it's signed. We had a big conversation about why I don't sign my artworks. Um, so I know I do, but I feel a bit you know, funny doing it. <laughs> so I can pass around some of these um, <coughs> journals. The big one here, this is actually um, shows some time between when I was in Tasmania doing work. And um, it actually says it's been a long time. 2015 is the year. We're going to start. We're going to get back into it. And then I didn't. <laughs> so um, it's very interesting. Um, oh, there's also some loose words there, so just uh, just be careful with those. Um, in here is also the Design Canberra Journal Challenge. Um, I have actually included all of the little images with the little blurbs that go with them. Yes. Uh, what, what's an example? Um, uh, that's a very good example. Um, okay, I won't use the first one. Um, so one of them was traces. So I don't know what people first think of when somebody says traces. Um, mine actually came um, about traces. My son is anaphylactic to nuts. So of course um, I'm always checking the packets. Um, and so traces for me mean something very different. Um, traces of nuts, of course, and everything. Um, so I actually used a photograph that I printed um, in the dark room in my school in Tasmania of his feet on a swing. <coughs> and then um, I used vellum, uh, like see-through vellum sort of paper. Um, and I, through my research, I found the ribbon um, um, like the protein, the actual protein that most people are allergic to um, in the peanuts. And I actually used that, you might be able to see it here, I actually used that and overlapped it, overlaid it over my son's um, shoes. So that was sort of one image. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was really good for me, but I, I probably put far too much time into it. <laughs> Um, so I have moved on from Banksias. Um, at the moment I am looking at the Poinciana trees with their very long sort of um, pods. Roughly, I can never remember their names. Um, Scientific names. Not yeah. like yes. I try. <laughs> um, yes, so has anyone got any questions at all? Yep. What sort of um, it's um, 0 0.05, yes, um, and actually I've, since then I've found a 0 0.03, so 0 0.03, yes. <laughs> so that's as fine as I can get. Yes. Did you put it on before or after you did the, um, the fine the fine um, Which bit, sorry? The dark, the dark black. Um, I actually did that last. Um, and. Um, the centres were actually black and I was really undecided about what colour I should paint around the outside. Um, and of course, if anyone makes art here, you know, it can be a very fine line between doing something that operated works and then doing something <laughs> that I shouldn't have done that. Um, often what I will do is photocopy my artworks. Um, so then I've got copies so I can cut them up, draw on them, um, I know, change things without actually changing the artwork. Yeah. The black one that you just said, yeah, it does on this book. Yeah. I know, I think so. <laughs> I have many journals, none of them are finished. Um, I've got many folders of papers. 
I collect papers from magazines, but I, um, I've been doing a lot of cut out. So in one of my smaller journals, um, I've actually got a Banksia in there. I think it might be a Banksia. Um, that one there, yes, and it's got eyes. <laughs> That's cool. So um, I actually did some cutouts, but I should have done. I should have found the eyes first, and then done the cutouts after, because I was looking through magazines trying to find the right size eyes for the cutouts. So yeah, um, but no, I like doing lots of cutouts and overlaying sort of um, you know, collage and uh, materials underneath. Um, so I'll collect lots of different papers, got folders and folders. I'm usually the person who has to clean out my studio when I die. <laughs> oh, another, another pile of papers. <laughs> but I'm a very visual person. Um, mm -hmm. I find that I collect lots of things and I've got lots of nowhere to put them. So I'm very big on journals, some cork boards. Um, um, at Mark Makers Art Studio, which I run, I do do journal workshops and I encourage everyone to have a journal because it's, um, you know, it doesn't have to look like anyone else's, it's yours. You just put all of your bits in it, um, to sort of dump all of your, um, all of, um, you know, your thoughts in there as well. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. I was the recent recipient of a regional arts development fund grant. So I'm going to be doing a community art project. Um, it's called Postcard Size Perspectives and it is basically just encouraging people to reconnect to art. So it's a very small format. Um, I'm partnered with Art Care, Sunshine Butterflies, Tottenham Primary School and NPCWA. Um, and I'll be running my workshops as well in collaboration with another artist called um, Charlotte Wensley. And um, it's just getting people to make art and it's amazing how many people that I come across who have said, oh no, I'm not artistic. Okay. I can't, you know, I'm no good at art. Um, a lot of people have seen to have negative experiences, whether they be in school um, or, you know, through somebody else, where they feel as if um, they're, they seem to have this idea that if they draw, say, a horse and it doesn't look like a photograph of a horse, well, then they can't draw. Um, so I'm trying to challenge those people's ideas on what art is, what it can be, and that you don't have to be good at art to enjoy it. So, um, no. <laughs> no, I don't. Yes. No, I don't. I sort of um, I don't because I enjoy it. Um, I find it's very good for um, you know, for my well-being. Um, yes, and I just like um, I just like being creative. I've always been creative, and um, but it is it's fine all the time. And I think quite often I can feel guilty if I'm making art because. I should be doing other things. Um, yeah, so um, I did teach in Tasmania. I taught for 10 years in the private school, and then when I moved here, I did short term relief and contract work because my husband works away. And it was hard trying to find that balance between you know, teaching in the classroom and then the amount of work that you have to do um, outside of that. Um, I did have an art school in Tasmania, um, and I wanted to continue to get up here, which I, which, I, which I did. And it's great because I just do art, whereas um, during relief work, I can end up, you know, sort of anywhere. Um, so it's great because I do get to um, be involved in art every day, but I still don't have a lot of time for my own art. I, I seem to say yes to far too many things, um, and sort of, you know, overload myself. Mm -hmm. and, um, try and make the time to make the art and that's what it is, you always have to schedule in time for yourself um, to, um, to do it. And you find, put you up, you've got, say, spare out, if you can't make anything, you can make Yes, and often if I'm at home, you know, my son will come in and sort of, you know, I need something or my husband or, you know, the cats or, you know, so yeah. it's very hard to sort of try and stay focused. Yes, so that's why when I get up early, it's sort of, you know, I know that I've got from sort of 4.35 until 6, 6.30 to, yeah. to do some work and try not to look at emails or anything else. <laughs> Were there any other questions at all? I'm interested in your application of design. 
Because they're so busy as well. I actually hadn't signed this one um, in the previous. It was framed in a different frame, and I got it re framed, and I hadn't actually signed it. And I thought, well, oh, I should sign it. Um, so it is actually signed, and it's um, tiny. It's sort of, oh, it's actually in there. <laughs> so it's very, very small, and I think that's a good way of signing it, is including it somewhere without it being. Um, Go to obvious. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, no, I'm going to enter it. And then, of course, um, I hadn't completed any of my, as I usually do, I hadn't completed any of the, um, uh, the you know, online paperwork um, or finished off my artist statement. And uh, my son had an appointment. I had to pick him up from school. And I went to the studio. And I'm like, right. It was quarter two. And I'm there. And I'm like, come on, come on. Got to five two. And I just thought, I just can't look at the clock. I just, I just have to keep going. So yes, once it was in, I think it's about 30 seconds past five o'clock. So it was like, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.